Antioch for GoPro Mina and Al Boom Marine Blake Stan. Okay, thanks very much. That's an exceptional introduction, isn't it? <laughs> so, I'd like to start off with my first question of the day. Clearly, I'm here to discuss with you about GoPro now. Who owns, who has heard of, or who has ever used a GoPro before? Put your hand up. All right, so most people in the room. Who's heard of the technology that stands behind GoPro? So, we've got Quick Apps, we've got Plus, We've got Capture. Who's heard of those before? Okay, not so many. That's the answer I was actually looking for. So, essentially GoPro stands for action cameras. Let's be honest, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that experience. Now, when we're talking about GoPro, there's always the hardware side of things, okay? But behind it, there needs to be the software. There needs to be something that nurtures and grows the brand. Now, that's where all of our applications come in. That's where all of our technology that's hidden behind the GoPro comes in. How that works in terms of events is customer engagement, okay? Now, a lot of people that have come up and spoken on the stage before me have discussed return on investment and essentially down to the deal, okay? That's an extremely important point, but for me, there's a different aspect to it. GoPro is about the customer experience, it's about how the customer uses it. It's their A to B experience from the beginning to the end. And it's what they actually gain from using our products. That to me is the most important thing. Now, when it comes to looking at us as a brand, okay, let me take a little bit of a, a cheeky step back for a moment. So I work for Albu Marine, okay, which is the, the licensed distributor for GoPro in the region. Okay? which also therefore makes me sit under the GoPro for this region. Now, when it comes to developing a, a marketing strategy, choosing the correct brand, the correct events for us to work with, it becomes a little bit of a difficult process, okay? Because obviously everybody thinks, wow, GoPro, I'm gonna send them an email, just like Nokia, I get a lot of those emails on a day-to-day -day basis going, hey, can you please you know, sponsor our event, can you partner with us, can you work with us, etc." It generally doesn't work like that. Let's take a step back and look at our region as a whole. So I look after the, the MENA region, Middle East and North Africa, okay? Now in the MENA region, our biggest market is the UAE. Our strongest market is the UAE. From there, we then take a step and look at nurturing our brand into our other GCC countries, okay? Our next focus is Saudi Arabia. So when it comes to looking at events, we don't want to look at events that just speak to the UAE environment. It speaks to the whole region. We need to look at what types of events, as a brand, suit us, talk to our clientele, okay, and also gain us that return on investment. Now, as mentioned by one of the other speakers prior to me, it's very important for us to look at who our target market is as GoPro. The exceptional thing about GoPro is that we have a very wide and very broad target market. How it all sits together, how it communicates to each and every person in our region is very, very different. So when it comes to an event, we need to look at which event speaks to which target market. So for example, if we look at the adventure, adventure sport, we have events such as such as Spartan Race, such as DWC, such as uh, Tough Mudder, for example. You know, that's just a starting point for us to consider. After that, we also look at how it actually nurtures our relationship with our customers. So on that point, when we partner with, a, with an event, what's the customer experience in terms of how do they get to use the brand, how, how do they get to communicate the brand, and how is the brand in front of them. So, how it used to work is banners and signage and all those types of things that are at an event, but how we look at making it work is we want the customer to take the software and the hardware product and put it together. 
which is why digital for us, partnering with an event platform is so important. So if we take Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube, Pinterest, I think I missed a couple there. Which one of those platforms do you think is the strongest for GoPro in our region? YouTube. Let's, let's take the UAE, for example. YouTube. YouTube. Okay. What about Saudi Arabia? Twitter? Okay. And then what about the MENA region as a whole? Facebook. No. Snapchat. Not Facebook. Facebook is probably one of our lowest interactive platforms. Instagram. Instagram. On a global platform, which is the most used platform globally? YouTube. Do you know how much content we have on YouTube at the moment? If you were to sit in front of a laptop and watch YouTube, how long would you be sitting in front of a laptop for? Just take a guess. Ever. 20 years. We're 20 years? <laughs> We've got 20 years down the front. <laughs> Have we got any other takers? <laughs> a thousand years? A little bit too far there. Anything else? Any other guesses? We're uploading 600 hours per minute uh, every day. Yep. So how much GoPro specific content is on YouTube as of today? This very moment. Take a stab in the dark. Very close down the front, by the way. Extremely close. There is 23 and a half years of content. So if you sit down and you watch YouTube, 23 and a half years. <laughs> if I pay you, okay. When you look at Instagram, for example, now that videos are on the platform, it's very, very quickly becoming one of our strongest platforms in the region. And for us, when it comes to looking at the selection of events and how we bring that into that relationship with GoPro, it's all about the experience and how the two essentially go together. It's how that software works with the hardware at the event. Especially when you look at something like YouTube that is quick, it's easy to post. How long does it take, for example, for you to film something on your GoPro and then post it onto, let's say, Instagram. Pick amount of time. How long does it take? 10 minutes. Wow, that's, that's a long time. Anyone else? Three. 60 seconds? Okay, we're getting closer. So, two weeks ago, two and a half? No, maybe about three weeks ago, there was a press release that was sent out globally by GoPro. We launched Quick Stories which is an extension of the Quick App. That allows you to link up your Hero 5 or your Hero 5 session to your phone, film the footage that you want, and in 15 seconds, 15 seconds, it creates a video for you. And I'm not talking just a video with no sound or a video with nothing else. I'm literally saying to you, it creates a video that has music, which is timed to the images in the video automatically, automatically created for you in 15 seconds. Now, not only that, the app also creates different lengths of the video for you. So all of that tied in together, you've now got the hardware, you've got the software, and then we bring in the selection of what event we actually choose. It's pretty easy for us as a brand to then select how we initiate that customer experience how we help our customer experience the GoPro from A to Z. That selection process is so simple for me. And it's not, it's not, about, it's not about conferences, it's not about, you know, Jitex. I mean, we, we do support our current customers and retailers with certain events, but it's not actually about that for us. It's about our end customer and how they experience our product. That is the prime importance. So, if you link all of these together, all of these platforms, plus our athletes, plus the one that I'm, I'm sure that all of the marketing people love, <laughs> if we link all of those together, 
and position that into an event, okay? Like a conference, like an exhibition, it provides not only into industry people, but also the customers an A to Z experience. It's simplified. It's a product that is simplified. It's so basic, it's so easy. Okay, so when it comes to looking at which events we choose and, and how we work, you know, looking at adventure sports, adventure, you know, events, looking at conferences. Now, the other thing to remember is that when we talk about, when we talk about GoPro and developing our strategy, we also look at things like if we're moving into a country or if a country, for example, that we are working with, its market isn't quite strong enough. So let me explain to you very, very briefly what, what my process is, what our team's process is, what Album Marine's process is, is that we look at the country and go, okay, who are our retailers? Who are our customers, right? Who is our clientele? And then from there, we look at the, cal the calendar of events. Okay, I'm not, I'm, not gonna create a, I'm not going to create an event to go to. I'm gonna see what's already existing on the MICE calendar, on the governmental calendar, whichever one you want to look for, I'm going to look at what fits on that calendar with my clientele, my customers, my retailers. And then I'm going to look at partnering with that event to develop a new region, to grow the brand socially, you know, to develop the customer, to develop our partnerships. It's that simple. It's that easy. As long as we've got that format in place, we're good. Things are good, things are simple, things are easy. When we look at developing a long-term plan as GoPro, again, it's about when the events are. It's about when the events are, it's about our digital platforms. Digital for GoPro is one of the strongest things we currently have going for us. GoPro was, GoPro was developed organically. It was literally our, our, our creator with the products, and then he spoke about it, and then the next per person spoke about it, and the next person spoke about it. It wasn't big events. I mean, we have partnered with, for example, Red Bull. We did the Red Bull cliff diving last year where, where GoPro was everywhere, and that was a very successful event for us. But it's an organic brand that grows organically. We talk to the customers. Our customers are the most important. It's about picking the right event that talks to the right customer. That's almost the slightest difficulty when our target market is so broad because we have to work out, okay, well, which event sits with which target market, which communicates with which person, which develops X, Y, Z. So it's not about, for me, the, the 20 emails that I receive a day going, can you come to this, you should sponsor this event, you should partner with this event. It's not about that. For me as a brand, for our team as a brand, it's about looking at how we can nurture and develop and grow the GoPro brand and the Albu Marine brand, looking at the communication through events and through digital. And if we can develop that and create that, then in the end we have a successful event. When it comes to you know, building relationships with existing, existing events, you know, we're not a brand that does a one-off event, packs up and goes home. I'll give you an example. We've just partnered with Spartan, Spartan Race Arabia. So we're looking at doing the rest of their events for this year. It's about a long-term relationship for us. It's about developing which of our target markets we can see, A, a large return on investment, but also what's missing. So for example, my question at the beginning, who knows about our software? About five people put their hands up. And that's, extremely important knowledge to me because it means that at some point we're kind of missing a communication which is fine because we can resolve that it's very easy to resolve that it's through our education process and through the nurturing of GoPro in events that we can go through the re-education process it's very easy for us to 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 come up with that process to get over that over that mountain so to speak and and with that our product sits hand in hand. Everybody knows who GoPro is. Or everybody's heard of it, or everybody's tried it, or in some way, shape, or form. So 
when it comes to choosing the right event for us, we have to be exceptionally strategic. Because again, it's not about having a stand that's, you know, let's say 50, 60, 70,000 dirhams. It's about working with the event. So I'll give you another example. One of our most successful events was actually the Red Bull Cliff Diving and also a press trip. It's not about going, okay, well, we're going to take influencers and we're going to take Mark Media and we're going to take X, Y, Z on this trip. It's about us looking at our local partners in the countries that we already work with and finding a message that is missing. For example, if you go on a weekend away, what are you going to take with you? A suitcase of clothes, everything you need, and nine times out of ten, you're going to take a camera or a phone, which has a camera in it, right? So in the region that possibly has the most public holidays worldwide, and correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong, but in a region that has the most public holidays worldwide, there is a perfect avenue for us as a brand and for our event partners to look at ways to communicate to our customers, okay, if you're going to go on a trip to, to Jordan, for example, you need to take a GoPro. And that's where our press trips and our events are so important because it's about choosing the right event that communicates to the right customer and then choosing the right event that communicates the right message to us and also to our customer. You know, we did a trip, for example, to, to Jordan last year and we took a couple of our customers as a prize. Everything paid for, you know, because GoPro is organic, that person or those three people have then communicated our brand, communicated quick apps and, you know, plus app and capture, and then they've then told their friends who've then told their friends who've then told their friends. It's not about taking an influencer that, for example, you know, posts to their entire market, or taking a media person or, a, for example, a print media partner. It's about working out a way that we can have that and then put our customers and put it together. So when it comes to GoPro deciding which event we're looking at, yes, we look at return on investment, but we also look at how we can bring all three of those aspects together to create the full 360 experience for everybody, including our customers. So that's it. I'm gonna leave it at that for today. I've still got two minutes on the clock. So does anyone have any questions at all? Yes. Sure. Yeah, so basically what happened with the, the Red Bull Cliff Diving, obviously we had the global sponsorship part, um, contract. So where for 12 months, GoPro partnered with all of the Red Bull events. Now, for our region, we got to essentially decide whether we wanted to be a part of the, the, the event or whether we didn't want to be a part of the event. Now, there's essentially four aspects that I was looking at when it came to, to this discussion. The first one was how many people are going to be at the event and what types of people are going to be at the event. Does that fit in between all of my target markets? If it ticks every single box, I'm winning. The second thing is what type of coverage comes with that. Now, we get, and I'm sure a lot of people in the room have also received those emails where you get a guaranteed footfall for the event. You know, it's an event at, let's, let's say, um, World Trade Center, and you're guaranteed 280,000 footfall, and it's the first year of the event. <laughs> it's not necessarily believable. But when it comes to something like the Red Bull Cliff Diving, you've, I look at the brands that are behind it. What's standing behind the event for us as a brand? Red Bull's there. Who's presenting the event? Who are the athletes? It also comes down to what participation opportunities we have as a brand. Can we sell our product? Do we not sell our product? But at the end of the day, how many people are going to be there if they fit in the target market?
And then what type of coverage is there? Is it global? Is it local? Is it digital? Is it social? You look at an event like the Red Bull Cliff Diving and there is so much social media coverage, there's so much digital coverage, there's so much above the line in terms of print, in terms of television. So it was essentially a no-brainer in answer to your question, but that's the categories that I still look, look towards when it comes to deciding whether we're going to be a part of this event or whether we're not going to be a part of the event. Does that answer your question? Kind of. Okay, you know, I, I can, let me, let me add to that question. So, everything that I've just said, yes, but then on top of that, post-event, it's also looking at what type of communication has come back, not just from the above-the-line advertising, not just from um, the media, but also from customers, consumers, or people that were actually at the event. And generally, when it comes to the event, they will try and provide you with that information, whether it's through a hashtag, whether it's through a tag of some form. Once I obtain that information, the coverage, the organic coverage, let me be very clear, that the organic coverage for us as a brand was existential. Because it wasn't just in Dubai. It was globally. People were talking about it. The supporters of the divers were talking about it. And that then started to develop all the way through. Also in the lead up to the event and the series, all of that was on there as well. So from a post event perspective, yes, there was the, the sales and the return on investment, which is all extremely important. But over and above that, it was the organic response to the event, which I'm most interested in. Because I'm not paying these people to, to talk about this product or to talk about this event. They just happen to be talking about it. It's you know, natural attrition for them to go to an event and experience it and then talk about it, which is why events for us are so important. Because if I, I've got like one second, so I'm gonna give you a very, very quick analogy. If I put a press release in front of you, okay, an invitation to an event, right, or a link to a YouTube video, which one are you gonna pick up first? the video and an event somewhere over here. Exactly, nobody's gonna pick up a press release. It's about the engagement. It's about getting the attention from your customer as quickly and physically as possible. Which is why we have over 22 years content on, on, on YouTube. It's why x is using our products to film the wingman next to the A380 because it's a product that people can talk about and that's why events are so important because we need to create a reason for them to have that conversation or at least to help push that conversation along organically. Cool. Any other questions? No? Thanks very much, guys. Thank you very much, Wonderful presentation. I'll keep the